Hello, this is Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. As a lot of readers <coughs> of Kali Tribune uh, ask uh, questions on René Guénon and ask indeed for more content on this content on this uh, philosopher, we'll oblige and we'll do after a long pause in making videos we'll do a video on René Guénon which you are presently watching uh, <coughs> hopefully this will be the last video done with obsolete uh, equipment uh, hopefully come next week we'll have some, we'll have upgraded upgraded uh, upgraded recording equipment and this will yield a more quality sound but also more quality video you don't need much quality for this kind of video of reading scrolling through a pdf book but there will be hopefully other kinds of videos now <coughs> talking about renown uh, we are here uh, we'll we'll be reading a bit from reign of the quantity and sign of the times the book that I already did uh, one article I say about and a series of videos that was quite well received <coughs> and this uh, will pick a few passages uh, from this book uh, passages devoted to the problem of individuum problem of form a problem of quality and quantity which kind of yield the essential essential insights of Genon. now in advance i have to point out one thing uh, <laughs> what Genon does here is not uh, inventing things, but just interpreting or reusing, rehashing ideas of uh, scholastics uh, colored with his oriental, I would say, Vedic or Indian or, or even Islamic uh, views on creation, but more like uh, Far Eastern Indian. But it, uh, he bases his analysis on on uh, Western scholastic tradition, by which is meant mostly high scholastics in the way of Thomas Aquinas, uh, based that is based primarily on Aristotle. The the reason for this is uh, this may <coughs> may be. Uh, uh, may sound strange to somebody who heard about Genon as a mystic or I don't know esotericist that he should be closer to Platonism but in fact Genon considered Aristotle's notions of nature quite in tune for instance with uh, Far Eastern or let's say Vedic uh, cosmogonies and metaphysics <coughs> this is entirely different questions but it is very uh, important to point out that <laughs> These thoughts are not originally Genon's, and he prides uh, on uh, not being original in the modern sense of the word. Uh, he just uses uh, the principles that are uh, passed by, uh, passed uh, on by tradition, with a big T, because this is the tradition he talks about, and he applies them to a modern condition. Uh, book is re was published in 1945 and he does that uh, to an extent brilliantly uh, because he had what is very interesting in Ganon and why I like him and use some of his terminology and although some things about him irritate irritate me to kingdom come, kingdom come uh, what is important uh, what was his talent was to to assimilate this kind of thinking. Uh, th those are, uh, these are thoughts that somebody like Thomas Aquinas would probably to uh, partially uh, apply if, if he would be uh, kind of transferred into our time uh, this is how he would interpret it. So this is, uh, uh, these passages uh, uh, will demonstrate that. Now, uh, this uh, chapter is called, the whole book is divided into very short, self, uh, almost self-contained chapters, although they are, of course, all connected. It's called The Principle of Individuation. Now, we'll read a passage and then we'll explain what this principle is. Genon says, The scholastics looked on materia, that is the matter, 
as a constituting the Principium Principium Individuationis. What was their reason for looking at things in that way and how far was it justified? In order to understand what is involved in this question, it is sufficient, without in any way going beyond the limits of our world, for no principle is here involved of a transcendent order with respect to this world, to envisage the relation of individuals to species. In this relation, species is on the side of form, or essence, and individuals, or more exactly, that which distinguishes individuals of the same species of one from another, are on the side of matter or substance. End quote. Now, uh, first of all, Principium uh, Individuationis is a principle of individuality, of uh, making something an uh, individual thing. Uh, what is very important here uh, to, to point out here, uh, Genon's use of, of these words, essence and uh, substance, is uh, very peculiar. Uh, it is not downright wrong, but it can be confusing because in scholastic substance is usually equivalent, can be equivalent to form. Uh, it is, for instance, you have the uh, the term quiditas, which is kind of combination of essence and substance of what makes matter, uh, what transcends both matter and form in their unity. And he kind of like uh, plays with these terms. It is not something that is uh, unusual. For instance, in Aristotle, he always did that. That is to say, for instance, he would sometimes say that matter is uh, substance, or sometimes would say that form is substance, and matter and form are usually uh, taken in opposition. But this is this only comes from the fact that this opposition uh, is always relative, and that uh, thought uh, uh, changes its expression depending on the context. Uh, or better to say the angle from which we are intuiting these uh, concepts. So the uh, concepts and the content of concepts transcends the language. And this is something that is very peculiar in, in true philosophy because uh, you can sometimes you have a sense of uh, you, you talk in terms that could be understood as contradictory and you don't have a sense or impression that you are contradicting yourself. And this this is because content is not contradictory, but uh, the, the, the words used in the peculiar context do not uh, correspond to some other context where they would be used in opposite sense. And this is something that, this comes from the fact that true metaphysics is not a system. If it were a system, you would never be able to use uh, one word, uh, for instance, form and, uh, as equivalent to essence, and then in the other, other, other context to call form uh, substance. Uh, you, would have to, you would have to petrify, uh, identify the terms the, with the concept and concepts with, with uh, the beings they, they grasp, they try to, to mentally, mentally uh, encompass. Now, this word form is very important. Now, this, uh, uh, this is uh, the, the hot dichotomy that comes from Aristotle between uh, Eidos and Hule, that is uh, form and matter is a conceptual pair, an ontological pair that uh, constitutes most, the thi most of the things uh, we can uh, call beings in this world, but there are beings that are pure eidos, or uh, eidos uh, is one of those Greek words with uh, multi-layered meanings. It can mean, it can mean species, as we will see, but it original meaning, of course, comes from uh, life experience and it, in some sense it really can mean intelligibility, rational structure of something and this is in fact its meaning. Eidos is a logos of things that is the, the something that we can understand 
in some being. For instance, when I say that uh, ashtray, that this thing I'm having before myself is has a form of ashtray, I don't mean it looks like ashtray, it has a visible form. No, I mean it has a purpose, above all things, a purpose of ashtray and in according to its purpose it has its uh, the properties the qualities of ashtray not something you would eat the soup out of but you would uh, extinguish your cigarette butt in it to take this banal example uh, uh, whereas the mata or hule materia is uh, a substratum which is formed by this form. It is uh, the unintelligible rest in things that we, which we, we don't grasp, that which is uh, um, purely uh, a foundation uh, that gives things um, uh, their corporeality. Although matter, this is this can be this um, taken into question because matter can also uh, there are opinions that matter can be understood in even broader sense of, uh, for instance, when you have uh, in Aristotle, for instance, in language, uh, when you say that matter of the word would be letters or syllables or consonants and so on, because. Uh, matter always uh, refers to those elements that constitute something but do not make that something what it is, do not qualify it. But uh, the real thing uh, that uh, qualifies something, that qualifies some matter is eidos. So the eidos uh, or the form is always primary to matter. Now, principium individuationis, as Genon would say, uh, would be a distinguishing of uh, individuals in the context of one form. For instance, I have a form of man. Uh, there is a form of man. There is an intelligible structure that can be understood as a human being. And matter would be a principle that distinguishes various human beings. Now, what does this mean? Genon will proceed to explain uh, the word form. And from this we'll see what, what, what is meant by this. Not only by Genon, but by many others before him. For instance, I quote, for instance, the word is used in its ordinary meaning in the statement that of all the conditions of a state of existence, form is the one that specifically characterizes that state as individual. It goes without saying that form in this sense must in no way be conceived as endowed with a spatial character, for it is so endowed only in our world because it is there combined with another condition, namely space, and space belongs to the domain of corporeal manifestation alone. But this question then arises. Does not form thus understood, rather than matter, or if preferred, quantity, represent the true principle of individuation, since individuals are what they are by virtue of the fact that they are conditioned by form? End quote. Now, now you have uh, the example of what I was talking about, about metaphysics in general. Uh, now he, I, I said that, uh, together with Genon, that matter is principle of individuation. And now he says, no, the form is a principle, not of individuation, but of, of uh, singularity of something, of uniqueness of something. And how can this be? Well, it's simple. The form, uh, the answer is simple. <laughs> uh, the form is what makes us what we are. Let's say, if we say human beings, uh, the form uh, can be understood as species. And for instance, if we say that we are intellectual species, that is to say that we are species that are 
characterized or qualified by the possession of the power of understanding, then this power of understanding as a principle of, a princip a principle of qualification is the one in all of us. But it, on the other hand, it makes each one of us unique uh, in uh, contrast to other beings that are not endowed, not acted upon, not energized by this form, for instance. And this uh, makes our matter different because matter of man and matter of dog are not the same in the same sense in, from this perspective. Uh, to a certain extent, as man participates, for instance, on being mammal or animal, they are, but in, uh, when we take a, ma a human being as a whole and uh, canine as a whole, uh, the, even the matter is different. Everything is different because uh, form is a principle of uniqueness and diversity. Uh, it, it, there is no paradox. It seems paradoxical, but it's not. It is what makes uh, uh, what makes things <laughs> that is beings in this world different. No, but this is not the same as the principle of individuation. Uh, I uh, <clears throat> principle of individuation has another scope, uh, Genon would say. Let's see what it means. Quote, the real question of the principle of individuation has a much more restricted range and can be reduced to this. The individuals of any one species all participate in a common nature, which is that of the species itself. This is what we were talking about. And is in all of them equally how then does it come about that in spite of this community of nature, these individuals are distinct beings, or even that they are in any way distinguishable one from other, another? Of what order is the determination which is added to specific nature so that the individuals may become separate beings while remaining within the species? It is this determination that the scholastics relate to matter, that is to say, ultimately, to quantity, according to their definition of the materia secunda of our world, that is the matter that is proper to some given species or some given being. And thus matter or quantity appears distinctly as a principle of separativity, end quote. We'll continue this after qualification. So what, he do, what does he say here? Now, a principio in the principle of individuation is a principle of separation. How to separate men, for instance? Uh, that are unified in their human nature, they are separated by matter, by bodies, um, by quantity, uh, which makes them quantifiable, so they can be counted. Uh, there is a difference between forms, and there is a difference inside of form, inside the species itself, this is a metaphysical difference, but this is not quant this is qualitative difference. For instance, this principle that angels, and this is the principle of uh, the, the Genon doesn't mention it here, but it comes in a package with this metaphysics of Middle Ages. The angels are pure eidos, pure species. Every angel is species unto itself, himself, that is. Uh, <clears throat> because he has no matter. He has no body, uh, no need of body. He can exist under the form of body uh, if there is a need for something like that. But it is the pure, uh, uh, pure spirit, and uh, it is a pure. Uh, he is a, few, a pure form. And uh, what is then the difference in uh, between angels? The only difference between angels in this, uh, this respect would be the difference itself that they are different. 
they are expression of uniqueness and by virtue of that they are automatically different from one another whereas in the world of corporeality of extrinsic things things that are uh, defined among other things but by their corporeality the there is this distinction of number of quantity and this distinction is expressed by separation to being in another place to being in different number to be quantifiable uh, we continue it can also be said that quantity is a determination added to species a species is exclusively qualitative and so is independent of quantity but such is not the case with individuals owing to the fact that they are incorporated and in this connection the greatest care must be taken to note that despite an erroneous opinion only too widespread among the moderns species must in no way be conceived as collectivity the latter being nothing but an arithmetical sum of individuals a collectivity is unlike species entirely quantitative now this René Guénon's uh, so-called traditionalist school, uh, for which he is not responsible, but people who came after him, inspired to extend by him, uh, is today in some corners uh, recognized as very dangerous in connection to people like Alexander Dugin and others. And now you'll see why uh, Guénon is not applicable to, to somebody like Dugin. And I already spoke about this at one point. A few months ago, uh, Dugin, for instance, loves, loves this collectivity, collective identity, that people uh, are supposedly losing their collective identity, that Western liberalism is destroying this. But uh, in Guénon's, in traditionalist view, uh, collective identity is a nonsense. Collective identity is... Uh, completely quantifiable given it's a quantity it comes from this reign of quantity of uh, mistaking the numerical diversity for real diversity and mistaking uh, the corporeal for spiritual or for what is extrinsic to what is intrinsic and he says he said says it here in no uncertain terms so the species of forms uh, are not collective they are unified but not collective what is collective can never be unified because it is built upon separation it is lumping together and uh, when he says when Genon says that one must be very careful about what he says and use the right word he's dead spot on right because uh, when somebody is not aware or acts as if he is not aware that what collectivity means he's not to be trusted he is the fool at best or uh, somebody that is uh, well lying or trying to manipulate you So what happens uh, in, in, in this Principio Individuationis, Principio Individuationis? Let's see what Genon says, quote, This separation turns individuals into so many units and turns their collectivity into quantitative multiplicity. At the limit, these individuals would be no more than something comparable two imagined atoms of the physicists deprived of every qualitative determination and although this limit can never in fact be reached it lies in the direction which the world of today is following a mere glance at things as they are is enough to make it clear that the aim is everywhere to reduce everything to uniformity whether it be human beings themselves or the things among which they live and it is obvious that such a result can only be obtained by suppressing as far as possible every qualitative distinction but it is particularly to be noted that some people through a strange delusion 
are all too willing to mistake this uniformization for a unification, whereas it is really exactly the opposite, as must appear evident in the light of the ever more marked accentuation of separativity implied. It must be insisted that quantity can only separate and cannot unite. Everything that proceeds from matter produces nothing but antagonism in many diverse forms between fragmentary units that are at the point directly opposite to true unity, or at least are pressing for, toward the point with all the weight of quantity no longer balanced by quality, but uniformization constitutes so important an aspect of the modern world and one so liable to be wrongly interpreted that another chapter must be devoted to a fuller development of this subject, end quote, a lengthy quote, but this sums it up. Now, what it says here is that we live in the state where uniformization is mistaken for unification, whereas unification for unification to be possible, uh, there has to be a certain freedom from corporeality. That is to say, uh, the tendency must be towards form and not towards matter, whereas in uniformization the tendency must be towards matter. Unification is not only possible but certain in a religious sense because unification is the way up and unification is the way down. Oh, uniformization! Now, unification is possible in virtue of form being uh, congenial and similar to its cause, whereas uh, quantity or matter without form is impossible. Form without matter is not only possible but certain, whereas matter without form is impossibility. Now, uh, wait what I said just now. Uh, this contradicts everything we are taught from pop culture. Call that pop culture Hollywood movies, uh, university education in social sciences, or popular science, as something from Carl Sagan and somebody like that, where they rely on the certainty of matter, uh, mind you, undefined matter, uh, matter, time, space, and other terms in physics, as far as I know, in natural sciences are not really defined. They are used uh, as uh, technical terms, but not defined. Nobody tells you what they are. Genon tells you this, not because Genon invented uh, the answers, but because he is he is applying uh, traditional metaphysics to it all with some peculiarities of, of his you may not notice at first sight, I will point them out in conclusion. Uh, uh, but strictly logically matter, if we define matter in this way, and I don't believe that, there are different ways to define it than as a possibility of form. Uh, possi pure possibility uh, is unthinkable, that is to say pure inert possibility that has no active principle in, in itself. You can have absolute all possibility in the sense of absolute power, but it has to be a possibility in the sense of possibility of creation, possibility that has active principle inside, intrinsic to itself. Whereas the pure form is the ascent towards up, uh, to towards heavens, in fact. It is uh, the principle of uh, something being qualified, something being understandable, something being... Uh, capable to be expressed in words, for instance, at the very least. And these, uh, this uh, dialectics was, in Guénon's view, as I said in, in my previous works on Guénon, that were more far-reaching than this uh, uh, reading of few passages, or he was of idea that the world is going into this, history is going into this direction of 
uh, reign of quantity that will eventually have to be overturned by its intrinsic nature. Uh, simply, uh, it will have to reflect from uh, direction towards nothingness, towards what is below, to reascend towards uh, what is spiritual, what is intelligible, what is up there and so on. Uh, here it is important to point out that this is uh, 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 Genon's explanation of the term that people uh, often ask me about the term individuum. This is pure quantity or pure discrete individual. Uh, would be this impossible uh, purely material being that is uh, absolutely separated, that has no principle of unification in itself. Uh, now, uh, peculiarity of Genon here is this uh, uh, word, uh, where is it, manifestation, which he always uses. This is something that uh, that is a telltale sign of his adherence to oriental metaphysics because he's not talking about uh, somebody uh, some of his uh, uh, here his uh, corporeal manifestation uh, the people scholastics he used here would never call it manifestation they would call it creation and this is a big difference and one has to be aware about these things in Genon he is not strictly speaking, a Christian, or uh, he fancies himself to not to be Western thinker. This is, I'm sorry, this is very Western. This is very traditional metaphysics, although in, in the times of Aristotle, when this came about, when these principles were written in the body of work, uh, notions of East and West were not the distinct in the same way they are now. But nevertheless, one is well advised to have this in mind about Genon. So this would be a very simple, uh, very simple demonstration of Genon's, uh, Genon's uh, philosophical analytical procedure, and he's very good at it. He's very clear, very difficult to read because he is clear. That's somewhat paradoxical, uh, but he puts it in really, really simple terms, and I would say to a most uh, part correct, and uh, to his credit, because he's considered traditionalist, albeit he never called himself such, he does, does use uh, this tradition in the sense that he is not putting himself in the forefront as discovering something, but literary, he's literary uh, perusing these eternal metaphysical principles and for me methods of thought to a given situation. So, this would be our, our uh, sh relatively short uh, with our own philosophical subject. Hope you enjoyed it, especially those who are interested in Genon. There will be more on Genon because interest, uh, there is a great interest about him. For him, you know, hopefully this qualified, uh, maybe clarified some questions you had about him. Thank you for your attention. This was Branko Malic, signing out.